Hi, I'm David Young with Verizon, a board member for the Internet Education Foundation, and I'm proud to introduce our next speaker who will be addressing one of the most pressing issues on the Internet today, and that is cybersecurity. We've all seen the headlines and read the stories about the latest hacks and data breaches. And just last week, President Obama raised this important issue in his State of the Union speech, calling on Congress to act swiftly. That's why we couldn't have a better person for our next keynote than Suzanne Spaulding. Ms. Spaulding is Undersecretary for the National Protection and Programs Directorate at the Department of Homeland Security. She has spent the last 25 years working on national security issues, which includes experience in the executive branch, Congress, and the private sector. Please join me in welcoming Undersecretary Spaulding. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. And um, thank you to the Internet Education Foundation. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here for your 11th annual State of the Net Conference. Uh, and I want to applaud the Internet Education Foundation uh, for all of the work that you've done over many years uh, to help foster uh, an informed discussion and debate around the many complex and challenging issues uh, that we encounter as we uh, work to make sure that all of us can take advantage of all the wonderful benefits that a networked world has to offer us. Uh, and it may surprise you to hear this from somebody who is uh, leading the efforts, at, uh, a core part of the efforts at the Department of Homeland Security around cybersecurity. Uh, but I do periodically remind our folks that cybersecurity is not the objective. Cybersecurity is a means to uh, the objective that, uh, that I just articulated. I mean, what we really are about is doing what we can to make sure that uh, folks can enjoy all of the benefits of a networked world. And we can't do that uh, if we don't have appropriate levels of cybersecurity where we need it. Uh, and so we're mindful, even as we are focused on a daily basis uh, at trying to improve cybersecurity, uh, across uh, governments at all levels and across the private sector and internationally uh, the, uh, to not lose sight of that broader objective. Uh, and, I, and so I applaud uh, the public awareness and education efforts of, of this group and others and all of you for being here to participate in these discussions. I'm going to thank you in advance uh, for some of the insights uh, that, I, that we will ultimately benefit from that I know will come uh, from the conversations that take place in this room, in the overflow room, and most importantly, always in the hallways uh, during your break times. Um, I, don't, I, I, I used to start my uh, discussions with groups by talking about, you know, educating folks about the nature of the threat. And I really don't have to do that anymore uh, because all of you I know read the paper uh, and watch the news and listen to the radio and have gotten uh, letters in your mailbox telling you that you're getting a new credit card. Uh, you're all aware of the scope uh, and, and depth and breadth of the challenge that we face uh, as we endeavor to take advantage of the benefits of the networked world uh, from those who would use that networked world uh, for their own financial gain uh, to uh, pursue political objectives or to pursue uh, um, uh, d uh, espionage or even destructive objectives. Uh, and so we look at this wide range of actors and activities uh, as we endeavor to build up our cybersecurity. This is a top priority for the department and for the Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson. Uh, our mission within the directorate that I, for which I am the undersecretary, uh, that is the National Protection and Programs Directorate, or NPPD. And so we have the lead for protecting the .gov, the civilian government uh, 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 assets, systems, and networks, and for guiding the national effort and working with the private sector uh, to make sure that we have appropriate cybersecurity across particularly uh, our critical infrastructure sectors, but across uh, the private sector generally, as well as state and local and territorial and tribal governments. Um, 
of particular focus for us is this unique relationship with the private sector uh, that the department has worked hard over the years to develop. Uh, and as I said, our focus is on uh, those things that are most critical. That is to say, those areas where a disruption uh, would have a significant impact, either on national security, or on economic security, or on public health and safety. And so we've divided that critical infrastructure universe into 16 sectors, and it includes electricity and water and communications and transportation. Uh, it includes financial services and chemical facilities and uh, nuclear reactors, a wide range of agriculture, a wide range of activities. But basically, it is all of those activities that really form the backbone of our society uh, and the things that impact your day-to-day -day lives. And we, we put a particular focus on working with those critical infrastructure owners and operators all across the country to make sure that they understand the threats that they face from all hazards, all of the ways in which that could be disrupted, whether it is a terrorist sabotage or a, a Superstorm Sandy or, a, or a, a major snowstorm up the East Coast uh, or a cyber attack. Uh, and so we work very hard to make sure that we're bringing the skills together uh, to take a holistic approach to risk management. And that's what we encourage CEOs all across the country uh, in the private sector to do as well, right? They're, what they're worried about is the functionality, is their ability to continue to pro provide that electricity, for example. And on some level, they don't care what is the cause of that disruption. They need to work across those various threat vectors to make sure that at the end of the day, they can continue to provide that service. And that's what we're looking for as well. And so that means they have to, they have to look at all of those threats and hazards. They have to look at their vulnerabilities to all of those threats and hazards. They have to understand the consequences that result from all of those threats and hazards, and they have to understand all the ways they can mitigate all of those things to try to reduce the likelihood of disruption. Uh, and so we work through across NPPD with our Office of Infrastructure Protection, as well as our cybersecurity, our cyber ninjas, our best and the brightest in the cyber world, uh, and our analysts who look at the interdependencies and understand cascading consequences to help inform those people who are making those risk management decisions across all levels of government and in the private sector. And that, in a nutshell, is what we're about uh, at NPPD uh, and the role that we play uh, in cybersecurity and in protecting critical infrastructure and making it more resilient. So we talk about protecting the security and the resilience of critical infrastructure, and we have to think about that in cyber as well. One of the areas uh, that I think has not gotten enough attention in the cyber security arena, we've spent a lot of time and attention on threats and vulnerabilities, and only now are beginning to realize how important it is to understand consequences. As we look at the prospect for cyber attacks to have physical consequences, we need to understand those consequences and we need to be prepared to respond and recover just as we have uh, 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 develop that expertise in the, in the physical world and in the context of, for example, natural disasters. We need to get more agile in the cyber context as well. Uh, because right now, uh, while we can do some basic things that would prevent about 80 or 90 percent of the intrusion activity, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second, um, there is still that, uh, that, that percentage at the top, sophisticated actors, advanced persistent threats, um, and we have to be prepared to operate in a degraded environment, to detect bad things that are in our systems uh, very quickly, much more quickly than we often do today, and to be able to respond and recover. And that's what you see reflected in the cybersecurity framework, which was developed under an executive order by the president uh, uh, that NIST at the Department of Commerce developed. We were very much involved in that, but many of you in this room played key roles in the development of that because it was very much private sector driven. And this is a framework that, uh, that provides best practices uh, for those who are, who are looking at ways to improve their cybersecurity. And it's best practices that were developed by the private sector, by and large. 
The most important aspect of that cybersecurity framework, and I would encourage all of you who are, who are, are worried about cybersecurity to take a look at it, the most important aspect to my mind is not that compilation of the best practices. It's helpful, but those were really already out there. What is really helpful is that it really does give you a framework for thinking about how to approach cybersecurity. And it breaks, so it breaks those best practices up into five categories and tells you to start by identifying. First one is identification. Identify, uh, and make sure that you understand and assess the things that you need to protect, right? So that's important. You can't necessarily protect everything. Think about what is most important for you to protect. Uh, I, I understand the threats that you face, the risks that you face. So there are lots of resources out there, and I would encourage you to go to dhs.gov. We've got a lot of resources uh, out there to help you understand and assess those risks and vulnerabilities. Uh, and then it, it says, having done that, uh, look at your current posture with regard to your ability to de detect bad things, to protect, to respond, and to recover. Just figure out where you are on this list. Then figure out where you would like to be and then plot a plan for getting from A to B. And you, the framework has lots of tools to help you do that. It's as simple as that. And as I say, while, while you often will hear that a determined adversary can penetrate any system or network uh, and might make you think, why bother? Uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you that, that uh, study after study has shown there are basic steps that you can take that are not expensive that can protect you against the vast majority of intrusion activity. And it's important to take those steps. And again, the cybersecurity framework is there to help you do that. Uh, at DHS, uh, we have, we do the heart and soul of our cybersecurity effort is the NCIC. That's our 24 by 7 operations center. It stands for the National Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Center. It's our operations floor, and we have on that floor not only our cyber experts within Department of Homeland Security, but also law enforcement sits there, intelligence uh, folks are there, the private sector are there, uh, all there to come together to help understand the world that we're seeing uh, and to develop uh, ways in which we can get that information out as broadly as we can to the public, along with advice about how to take actions to protect yourselves against what we're seeing, our mitigation measures. So the NKIC, since 2009, when it was stood up, has, has responded to over half a million incident reports that have come in to the NKIC. We have put out over 26,000 actionable alerts. And again, I think the uh, address is us-cert, C-E-R-T, uh, dot gov. Uh, and that will be, that's a, a, another entree for you to see all of the resources that are there. If you want to sign up for those alerts to make sure that you're seeing what we're seeing and getting the mitigation measures. If you want uh, help implementing that cybersecurity framework, we have a whole program uh, called C Cubed VP, uh, uh, Critical Infrastructure Cyber Communities uh, Voluntary Program. And it is, it is designed to help businesses and individuals, uh, individuals and businesses of all sizes to implement and use the cybersecurity framework to improve their cybersecurity. Uh, so again, I would encourage all of you to take advantage of those resources and take those basic steps. Uh, we recently, you know, there's a lot of talk about cybersecurity legislation on the Hill. Uh, and despite the fact that folks kept saying Congress was not going to move on cybersecurity legislation, we were fortunate enough to have uh, a several major cybersecurity uh, legislative bills pass in the last Congress. Uh, at the very end of the last Congress, but I want to thank, I know there's some congressional staff here, and I want to thank all of you uh, who worked on that and helped us get that through Congress. Very important authorization for that operations center at the department so that the private sector feels comfortable uh, calling on us for help. Uh, and so we send flyaway teams in when we get a call that a company sees something funny on their system. They think they maybe have detected some uh, malicious activity. Uh, we, can, we can come in and help them. 
uh, and they have a clear understanding of what our legal authority is. That was very important, important for information sharing, important for that direct outreach to the private sector that is such a fundamental part of what we do. Um, we also had legislation that clarified our role for the .gov. Uh, and that was very important because the information, the lessons we learn and the cyber threat indicator information that we get through our working with departments and agencies on sensing um, activity in the .gov world, <coughs> we can use that and turn around and get, it, get that out broadly, and we do, to the private sector so that you can benefit uh, from what we're seeing in the .gov world. So that was very important. And then thirdly, building that cyber pipeline. Uh, of workforce so that we can continue to hire the best and the brightest and that you can continue to have access to the to uh, cyber professionals that all of us need. Uh, I'm convinced that we need to be much more agile and flexible in terms of sharing that cyber talent. The government's uh, role has uh, model has always been take people in young, keep them for their entire career. Uh, and I, you know, it's clear in the cyber uh, arena we're not going to be able to do that. We can't compete with the private sector salaries, but we have a great sense of mission uh, at the Department of Homeland Security and elsewhere across the government. And I think we can take kids right out of uh, school uh, and who have a sense of mission and, and want to learn fast, give them on-the-job training in our, in our cyber environment. You will lure them away in the private sector with a higher salary than we could ever pay. Uh, you will continue to train them, and then I believe at some point they will miss the mission and they will come back to us uh, with all that private sector knowledge and awareness. And that's a wonderful uh, synergy, I think, between the two of our, our two groups. Um, but that's a big part of what we do. Public awareness is a huge part of what we do, and so an opportunity to talk to a, a terrific uh, group like this is really uh, wonderful. We work with venture capitalists, we work with the American Bar Association, we work with auditors, we work with financial investors, to all of them to say, if you're looking at or engaged in transactional activity, if you're advising a client as a lawyer who's about to buy a small company or a large company or do a joint venture, if you're not including cybersecurity as part of your due diligence, you are not doing your job. If you're a venture capitalist and you're about to invest in a startup and you're not making sure that they have good cybersecurity practices, you are throwing your money down a rat hole because that intellectual property you're paying all that money for could be going right out the back door, right? Uh, so all of those groups that have a way of influencing the market so that the market will drive effective cybersecurity practices, I think that is the most powerful way that we can move forward. Um, but I need your help. This is a shared uh, activity. You have advantage, comparative advantages. We have comparative advantages. We need to work together. It's something we work on every day to make sure that we are uh, bringing all of the resources, expertise, uh, capabilities that we can to bear on what is a growing challenge uh, uh, of cybersecurity. So again, I want to keep you all on schedule. Uh, and I want to thank you again for this opportunity. And thank you uh, for your interest in this subject. Thanks very much. <laughs>